제임스 완 감독님을 모시도록 하겠습니다. 자, 도와주시죠. 아, um, yes. Thank you so much for coming out here to do this with me. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's such a pleasure and an honor for me to be invited to be part of this. Commercial films, which, uh, which Australia is kind of not really known for. And, uh, and so because of that, we, we, we got together and we thought, what, what, I, what kind of project would, uh, would, that we can do for, for, for no money that we can make just ourselves between the two of us. And, uh, and with that concept, we started cooking up a whole bunch of ideas that eventually led to the, uh, the genesis of Soul. So, so we, that's how the, the genesis for Soul came about, about two guys trapped in a room. They cannot get out of there. And, uh, and so, you know, and so we spent uh, like a year to two years writing the script for that and then we spent another year trying to um, get funding to make the movie uh, in Australia and uh, somehow an agent in, uh, in LA that, that knew um, our, our manager even though this was an agent in television what if we um, pick a scene from the script that is, that, that, that is really um, inventive, that is really confronting. And, and if we shoot that one scene and make it like, like a complete shot on its own, maybe we can use that to, uh, to sell to the producers or sell to the agent or sell to anyone. So we landed in LA. Um, I was there for one week. And on that first day, we went and met with um, these three producers and they said to us in the room, we, on our very first meeting said, we love this project. Um, we don't have a lot of money to make it, but, you know, but we will let you, James, direct it. All across town, we went to DreamWorks, we went to Fox. Um, and we, we did all these huge meetings. Uh, we did the meeting for the whole week and, uh, and we came back to the very first meeting that we had with the first lot of producers and we said, yes, we will do it with you and the rest was history. Horror works in a way where it, it, it plays with our fear um, and, and it usually is our fear of the unknown. Um, um, you know, like, uh, or, or fear of, of, of uh, fear of death, fear of um, um, harms being done to our loved ones, fear of losing our loved ones. And so I think these are all the different um, elements of fear that, uh, that in, in, a, in a scary movie, that's what you play on. Um, you know, I, I, and for me, I like to set my scary movies in everyday situations that we can all relate to. Uh, and that, that, that is a reason why a lot of my scary movies tend to take place in a house because um, there is nothing more ordinary and more mundane and everyday than, uh, than the house that you live in. And, um, and the idea that, uh, that your house, which is your castle, your fortress, your sanctuary, could be, uh, could be invaded by, you know, by, if it's invaded by a human character, by an intruder, that is very frightening. I like to play with things that are common. Um, um, you know, and so, uh, so it's very, I guess it's very important for me to, uh, to design things that, um, that people can ultimately relate to. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I'm always trying to find new ways to, um, to, to scare the audience in a way that we've never seen before. Um, that to me is the fun and challenge of making the movies that I make. I, I, I generally, I write my movies very late at night, like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. And, when, and I have all the lights in my house switched off. And, uh, and I would think about the scares and I will walk around the house in the middle of the night. And if that scares the crap out of me, then chances are it's going to scare the crap out of someone as well. <laughs> you know, then, then I may pitch the idea to, uh, 
to my writers or to my storyboard artists or just someone else just to get some kind of feedback. Um, and, but usually I already know if it's gonna be effective or not. As a filmmaker, I, I don't want to be just known for one thing. I think, or as an artist, I want to be known, you know, I want to be able to try different things. Um, whether or not I succeed in those things, you know, uh, I don't know, but at least um, I give them a shot. So it doesn't really matter how big the film is or how small it is. The process is exactly the same. You still deal with all kinds of craziness. Um, you can still never predict what's going to happen. And, uh, and it's always still very messy and, and very um, uncoordinated. It, it, well, it's kind of like a coordinated mess that um, sh making a movie is like, um, you know, is, it's, it's like a traveling circus. Um, you, you have um, you know better equipment better tools to work with um, but uh, but at the same time it, it's also more difficult because you have less freedom because the more expensive a movie is the more people are watching over your shoulders now telling you kind of how you know telling you kind of telling you how you should make your movie and, and that is always the big fight you know always the big struggle for directors is uh, trying to get your vision across without other people diluting it too much We live in a really amazing time for young, new, aspiring filmmakers that, uh, that all you really have to do is just go out there, you know, follow your dreams, follow your passion. It, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter if it takes a while, if it's quick or, or long, um, you know, just, just, just wait it out. Just keep doing it, keep, keep going for it because you never know when, you know, um, the chance will come and, and when it does, it's the most incredible feeling you will have. Uh, and thank you so much for all the fantastic questions. Um, I wish you guys all the best, and uh, and I'm sure you you know you guys have amazing stories to make uh, moving forward as well. So thank you so much.